Hi everyone, this is Jacqueline Apoliezzi from Kingsway Real Estate and welcome to our fourth episode of Who Are You? Today we have the pleasure of learning and getting to know the amazing Vula. She is a mother of four, an entrepreneur, a fashion lover, a mental health advocate, and the owner and creator of four amazing kids apparel. So amazing, super excited to get this interview started. So hi Vula, thank you so much for chatting with me today. So if you can just describe your business with me. Okay, so my business is for Amazing Kids Apparel, and basically it is a children and adults apparel company that aims to empower and inspire kindness, and that small acts of kindness can make a, a huge impact on someone's life, and uh, we uh, donate specifically back to child and youth mental health initiatives. Yeah. Uh, we partner with North York General Hospital here in Toronto, mm -hmm. and um, we give back to um, their uh, child and youth mental health facility, which is called Phillips House. Uh, it just opened um, just under a year ago. So we're really proud to be, I'm really proud to be uh, partners with the hospital because I do believe that it is a very important important cause yeah absolutely that's so nice i just got goosebumps thank you ah <laughs> it's thank really you. sweet i really like that very touching so what what made you decide to start this business so i had made a sort of promise to myself because i myself have suffered all my life from generalized anxiety disorder and i wasn't really formally diagnosed until about the age of 32. um so i i once i I came to a better place with my anxiety and I knew that I was strong enough to um, talk about it. I decided that I would start my business and be more open about my mental health struggles and um, hopefully empower others to either take strength from my story or other people's stories or do the same and, and tell their own story. So yeah. it sort of came, came from that. I, I just, I, I, it was a promise to myself because yeah. I found that when I listen to other stories, it's, it would, it is what helped me. So, um, if I can sort of help someone else, even if it's just one person, um, sure. by sharing mine, sure. I thought, yeah. And that's, so that's where the birth of, of the business came from. And, uh, so all of our shirts have empowering slogans and, uh, we, I tie it always back to um, my message about mental health and giving back. So, yeah. That's really sweet. That's really Thank sweet. Thank you. So what is something that some people maybe don't know about you? It could be business um, or personal related. So, I mean, I have the four kids. That's where it all sort of stemmed from, the, the name of the business and uh, sort of what gives me strength every day to um, – conquer my mental health struggles it, it is a daily struggle so uh and uh and i also sorry i lost my train of thought <laughs> no worries um, no oh worries. and about the business actually yeah. what people might not know is i pride myself on the fact that it's completely 100 percent canadian in fact it's completely made in toronto so i only work with local wholesalers local printers mm -hmm. um and everything i design everything it's all done within the city so uh, I'm, I'm also very proud of that fact too. Yeah, so sure. I try to keep it, keep it local. And as a result of that, I feel like it's, you know, um, we stand up for human rights too, as, as a business. So yeah. that's nice. Homegrown. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I, it's I know. not always the easiest route because it is a little bit more pricey, but yes. uh, it, it definitely is just something that is important. important and I feel like so many people now are, are really looking back, you know, whether it's food, whether it's clothing, where is it coming from, right? They like to yes. know more about that process and not so much, um, you know, footprint on, on the environment, right? Just exactly. Yeah. There, there is a movement towards, uh, I, I term it with my business, socially conscious and ethically made apparel. Yeah. So, uh, knowing where it's come from, yeah. um, who's made it and, and if it's, if, you know, human rights are taken into consideration yeah. when it's being yeah. manufactured. So yeah. yeah, no, that's so true. There's so many businesses that we're not aware of that, you know, maybe mm -hmm. there's young kids that are making the, the products and right. they're not being paid or they're not being fed. And I mean, that's another story, but um, yeah, really yeah, cool. no, it's definitely that's important. important. And, and something that I think doesn't always get recognized as much because of the message about mental health that is obviously at the forefront, yeah. but yeah. Um, it is also important to be yeah. eth ethically made. So for sure, yeah. for sure. Ties in wonderfully. So what is the most memorable experience you've had working with the customer? 
Um, I can't really pin it down to one. I had a hard time answering that because yeah. it's, I have to say that it's just been, um, there's been multiple mem- memorable experiences because I'm very open again, like I said, about my own struggles. And so I find when I, when I do talk about my own mental health struggles, that will in turn make people comfortable and they'll talk about their own struggles. So uh, I've had a lot of conversations, especially when I've gone to local markets and have been promoting my business and selling my, my apparel. Um, I end up having all these lengthy conversations with people and really bonding with them essentially and connecting with them in so many ways because we're tied by our stories and everybody has a story. And that's Mm -hmm. another thing I discussed that everybody has a story. And so, you know, it's important to be kind. And, and I think that when people hear that message, it just, it resonates. Right. So I, 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 I have to say I've made a lot of, Uh, I've built a community and it's been really, really nice and fulfilling and, and, and comforting to know that, people can sh- feel comfortable with me to share their own, exactly. their own struggles as exactly. well. So nice. yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. thinks, Oh, you know, my, how I'm feeling, I must be alone. And you, you strike up a right. conversation, you realize that you're not, you're not. Exactly. Right? And that, and that's the entire reason I started this. Hmm. So, because I did feel alone for a really long time and y- there is a stigma. I mean, people don't want to talk about it still to this day. And even when I do talk about it sometimes, um, my mom will get phone calls and they'll uh. be is Vula okay? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, that's, that's, yeah. that's essentially sometimes, I mean, I know they're doing it, to, you know, out of the goodness of their hearts, but it's also a reason why people don't have these discussions. And yeah. so there yeah. is still a stigma. And I think it's important to, to sort of um, continue the conversation no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's yeah. very, very true. So what are some of the lowest lows that you've experienced in life so far? And what, what made you uh, get through them? And how did you get through mm-hmm. them? So I'd have to say going back to what we said before, when I was 32, and I was formally diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, I'd reached my, my lowest point with my mental health. Um, I was having panic attacks, and it was starting to really impact my daily life, where it was hard to to leave the house. And it was always a struggle. So Mm -hmm. I finally, um, I knew something was, was not right. And so I, I consulted with my doctor and we, um, decided that the best form of, uh, for me was to consult a naturopathic doctor as well. And Mm -hmm. I started, um, a round of supplements and just making sure I was eating well, sleeping well, taking care of myself because as a mom, that was the other struggle. It was, I had, um, three kids at the time. So it was um, just really challenging to balance it all out and just make sure that I was healthy so everybody could be in a better place. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, so it was, I think that as much as it was my lowest point, though, is my most empowering point, because yeah. having a name for what I, I was feeling uh, helped to help me find a path to, to yeah. be to get better yeah, yeah. you realize that it, it existed so there's you know, exactly there's room for improvement. yeah I always had wondered all my life you know as a kid I was the worry wart that's wow. just how even my friends would call me that wow and so it was I thought okay I'm just a worrier and that's I you know it that's just who I am but yeah. it it's not it's something that that can be helped and I don't didn't have to suffer in silence as long mm-hmm. as I did and mm-hmm. and I could move on from it and, and though although it's I never say I'm healed from it. It's something that you struggle with every day. I think mental yeah. health, but you can you can uh, cope, and you can yeah. more than cope, but you can yeah. you can move on, and there is there is hope. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very very true. Our next question is: How has your business been affected by COVID nineteen? Right. Yeah. So I I um I find that it's been affected directly and indirectly. Mm-hmm. So directly, uh sales have actually increased, which is a good thing uh, because I think people are really looking to online shopping and um, because there really isn't another choice at this point. Um, Not uh, well, eventually we will get there, but uh, I think that because of the online thing and then as well, I think my message too um, about positivity and staying positive and empowering and spreading kindness. I think those are all really relevant messages at a time like this. People always need to hear it, but even more so at times of hardship. So um, I think that, so it directly, it's actually not been a super bad thing for me. Um, the virus, however, having said that indirectly, I find that it's 
impacted my life significantly in terms of my ability to actually run my business because of the fact that I have all four kids at home. I'm trying to homeschool them. I'm trying to nourish, nourish them, yeah. make sure my house nourish is in order and, yeah. and myself as well. So yeah. finding the work and home life balance has been a, a huge struggle as a result of COVID-19. It's really, I find, and it has impacted my mental health as well because, you know, I'm trying to stay calm and remain not anxious and, yeah. and because I, then my kids feed off of my energy too. And then they, they have anxieties as well about it all. So it's, it's also, it's been a struggle that way I find. So indirectly, yeah, just, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were, she said, I think this is going to set some women back to the 1950s because some women do feel that, you know, a little tied down in terms of home life because of it. So yeah. 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 I- Unrelated question. Well, I mean, related to obviously our conversation. Do do your kids understand your business? Do they do they understand the message behind your company? They do. They yeah. do. In fact, they actually helped me quite a bit. I designed a shirt with my oldest um, back in January for um, anti bullying day. Mm-hmm. So we did a, a pink pink shirt for anti bullying day, and nice. she um I kind of we talked discussed what kind of words that uh, would work for the the theme of the day, and it was. Yeah. The shirt said, I am, in, I am strong, inclusive, empowering, and kind. Mm-hmm. So, And she kind of drew it out, and I edited mm-hmm. it, and we worked on it together. So um, the younger ones are a little more obviously not as yeah. aware, but my older, my older two are very much involved. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's important for me, especially because my older two are girls. Mm-hmm. So I want them to see, you know, that you can be a woman yeah. in business and be an entrepreneur yeah, and, and achieve anything you want. So absolutely. it's, yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's the age. So I try to involve them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. They're 11 and nine. So it's, it starts. Yeah. I yeah. like, I'm happy it's starting now that yeah. you know, they're, they're yeah. getting that message. Oh, me. that's really sweet. That's really special. <laughs> that's really nice. Thank you. Thank you. So, so what neighborhood do you live in and what are your favorite things to do, especially with this beautiful weather? That we've been yeah, in. so well, I live in um, the York Mills and Bayview area. Okay. So um, we we love it here. It's it's very it's beautiful and it's quiet and we we love to take walks around the um, neighborhood. Look at all the amazing homes that are here. Mm-hmm. And um, we usually we used to go to our um, a park just down the street. Not yeah. so much anymore. Mm-hmm. But we've just been sort of enjoying our own home and. Yes hanging out in the backyard now, especially yeah. if the weather's nice, bike yeah. riding. Um, yeah, generally we feel like it's a, a great, great place to be and safe and Very nice. it's quiet enough. Our street's a little bit, you know, we've got a lot of people walking and stuff, but it's yeah. nice to see other people's faces too at this point. For sure. So, For sure. Yeah. It's cute when yeah. I do my nightly walks, everyone's waving to each other. I it's know. Like three months ago, we didn't know who these people were and now we're seeing so them more true. and more. kind of nice. So it is, it is. closer, right? I think so. And, you know, I think people are craving a lot, a lot more social interaction than yeah. they were. So yeah. I, we're all, I think it's, there's been a lot of negatives, but, you know, we're also, I think people are self-reflecting and realizing mm-hmm. the simple things that we yeah. need to just Absolutely. be fulfilled. So, Slow yeah. Slow it down, right? Exactly, exactly. So awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much. And the last question is, my pleasure. How can, how can people reach out to you now? I mean, we know on Instagram, are there any other ways that clients and customers can reach out? Yeah, Instagram. Uh, everything's on Instagram and social media. Um, I also have um, an email address they can um, access me at. It's info at fouramazingkids.com. So, okay. and my website, um, www.fouramazingkids.com. You can also message me through there. And uh, again, all social media, Facebook, um, Instagram. Awesome. I'm also on Twitter. Not very active. Yeah. I still don't, I haven't figured out Twitter, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to be on it like when it first, first came out. It's, it's yeah. a thing to add to the list. <laughs> yes, I'm finding so that it's, it's hard. I, I usually stick to Instagram. I find that the most, um, where I have the most of following and yeah. uh, the most response. So yeah, yeah that's okay. probably the number one choice, but um, cool. there's email as well. So yeah, yeah. Well, I'll link everything afterwards in the video. Perfect. So viewers can take a look. Well, thank Amazing. you so much. It was so nice. Thank to you. you virtually. And hopefully when all this yes. is over, we can meet in person. And, <laughs> yes, of um, course. For- awesome. And if you have, you know, any questions sure. for me, you know where to reach me.
great. Thank you so much awesome. for the opportunity. No I really problem. appreciate it. No problem. Enjoy the okay. day. Talk to you soon. Same to you. Bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Villa, for taking the time to chat with me today. That was super fun, especially knowing that you have four children at home who are probably pulling at your leg to want to get their mommy back. Really, really great to chat with you and to get to learn a little bit more about your business. For those of you who would like to be interviewed, you can call or text me anytime at 416-230-8506, or you can reach me on any of my social media platforms. Have a great day, everybody, and stay safe.